Hi, this is Drum Sam. And this is Baseline Smith. We're here today uh, to take you through the process of how we created one of our early album tracks called Close. This track was done in 2010. Um, we had it on, a, on a, an old system, so what we're going to do is recreate the whole thing for you. Uh, with well, you're going to be using Studio One and Personas, aren't we? Studio One and Personas and updating techniques where we can. So yeah, the reason we're using ProSonus is because obviously when we did close uh, in 2009, 2010, it was all done on Cubase. Uh, now we've migrated everything over to uh, Studio One and Personas. It's 64-bit. Um, Which means we can now utilize all 24 gig of RAM uh, and we can basically, the, the time stretching, there's so much things that we love about ProSonus. Uh, the time stretching is fantastic. The, the fact that uh, it obviously is 64-bit, the uh, and we spend a lot of time exporting um, stems and things like that, and it can do it really, really quick. So it's a, it's a phenomenal piece of kit. So uh, that's really cool. So what we're going to do first of all is just show you how um, we did the the break. We always start with the break, the kick and snare kind of thing. Um, this obviously has been pre-processed, but what we're going to do is basically show you how we would have done it. And uh, and the tricks and tips that we would use generally to to make it to make a drum sound based on Smith production. Um, another benefit for uh, Personas was the fact that uh, Melodyne comes as standard as the editor, and um, yeah, that's um, a massive benefit for us. So yeah, we're going to start with the kick and the snare. It's already been pre-processed a little bit, but what we're going to do is we'll get off the. Um, yeah. So we'll just put the uh, we'll put on the always what we put on the master buff is uh, the the, the uh, frequency analyzer, and since we've been using 64 bit, we decided the uh, the best one we found is the blue cap frequency analyzer. Um, this one just because we we always used to use the Roger Nichols. Um, digital analyzer thing, um, but that was obviously it's not been updated. I think he died, I think, or something like that. Um, of which that now we we went for this because it's 64 bit, yeah. and we find that it's as quick and as accurate as, as what we're what we're after. Uh, it also got the spectrogram as well, which is really quite handy. So yeah, we'll, we'll start with the kick and the snare. Do you want to um, put the? We're going to add the uh, fab filter. Yeah, let's add the fab filter to. Um. And what you can see here, what the, the reason one, the main reasons why we use Fab Filter, we we love it so much because uh, it's, you can focus the um, the compression on the uh, on a particular frequency, uh, which is really cool. And this acts in the expert mode. You can also using the uh, see in the, the using this sort of thing here. Press that. You can actually see visually what's going on, and, and that really helps with how we're doing things. But if you press that anyway, go to expert mode. You can actually then really target the frequencies yeah. that you're really after, and which frequencies you want to uh, really hone in on. We're normally homing in on around the 30 to about 100, 150 for the kick drum. Um, as you can hear, that's the actual frequency that we're working on. Just there, auditions, fine tunes into that part there. You take that off. You can you can obviously you can see that where, where it's happening. If you turn the ratio up um, and things like that, you can you can clearly you can hear the difference more. and see the difference yeah. of uh, of how good that is. Which is obviously because it's been pre-processed already. We don't really want to change it too much. Too much. So, but that's how we would have done it in the first place. So, yeah. right, lovely. Right, next one. We always um, put an analyzer on there as well, don't we? So we can kind of um, keep a keep a general idea of of, uh, of, of where, where things are coming through. Spectrum. So, for example, that kick there, like, like what we wanted, certainly this particular area here, from 101. Oops, go back one. can see sort of from around 100 to 200, almost from 40 to, to there, it's really quite coming in quite good. We'll turn it down just a little bit so it doesn't quite poke too high over. So then we're going to work on the snare. In fact, actually, if we want to, just quickly, what we, what we could do 
Um, and what we did do it on the original one is added probably a bit of uh, EQ on that. Yeah, from the Pro Q. Yeah, so what we'll do is just add a bit of that onto the onto the bus. And here, which really helps when you've got the the analyzer on as well, you can really sort of poke home through in, yeah. and home in what what you really want. Like I say, so that now. Is, is even the, the 101 sort of side is really really coming through and that's what we want we want we want it to peak just at, at that little bit we don't want too much too much thud so uh, we've cut that down a little bit as well but obviously like I said we have done it before so mm. just something like that the important thing is to um, you know have your kick and, and snare uh, punchy in the mix at the right frequencies and taking out the frequencies below those frequencies that you don't need, particularly the, the kick drum area, because you want to leave enough for the bass yeah, in exactly. the sub. Another benefit of uh, Prosonus is that um, if when you save your preset, say here for example, it then saves it in there. So it's a quick, again, all about the workflow with us, to be honest. We love, we love having, creating that vibe and then working together on that, on, you know, yeah. bouncing off that and working with the vibe rather than being too technical and spending a long time doing it. Um, it it's nice to be able to move quite quickly and we find Prasonis helps that workflow mm -hmm. uh, as far as, as, as doing things like that is concerned. And you can drag, drag and drop and we can move things through things quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Like I say, th this thing here, the EQ is pretty much standard. You know, it's just a matter of tweaking, um, uh, you know, for each kick and snare that we do, you know, if you, it's a great place to start rather than having to, you know, set and then you can fine tune it. Setting up a, a, a small, a, you know, a bell filled, um, a bell EQ and things like that. That's it, it. Takes a bit of time. So if we just move quite quickly through it, um, it you know, it just means our overall workflow, and we can get to the, the, the good, the fun bit of actually making the tune kind of thing. So, but yeah, that's pretty much what we do. So we have a, a an EQ and a compressor. Say that on the uh, on the kick drum. Uh, then we move to the snare drum. Obviously, we'll, we'll do pretty much the same thing there again. Uh, like I say, we, we have we have already set up a, a, a standard preset, which is kind of like a it's there. It's on on the on the actual thing itself. It's a, it's a derivative of the basic punch setting that was on there. Um, and that is a, that is actually a preset on the. On, on the, the actual, on the the actual scene. yeah, yeah, and so what happens again with a similar kind of thing? Um, when you press, you can hear. If I'll turn it off first, so you can hear it. So when you then add it now, you can see what's basically happening, and then depending on how much or how little you turn up the ratio and the threshold, you can do different things to it. So you can either have get more punch. Or you know, get the release nice and sharp. It can add like that click if you want to it. Um, but like I say, this has been already preset, so we, we're only going to do it a little bit today, just to show you, um, uh, you know, basically how, how we would have done it. So again, we're focusing. We can either could really control the focus and really we go between again, sort of like 100, possibly 300 or something like that. Or if we want to get the whole, all the way up to you know the high, the high bit as well. Um, which is really really cool and we find it really helpful. Again, same thing again, we'll just add a little, we'll just make sure that the uh, EQ, again by adding that little little notch there, you can almost hear like this a, a sort of a ring, a sort of ring. Now obviously we've already done that once, so we open up the, um, the frequency again and you can see that it's really making really pushing that through on there on the final mix. But another beauty of using this Pro Q is because it's the uh, the analyzer is actually in, in in the thing itself which is you really see it underneath. So the GUE for the fab filters are absolutely you know the GUIs are, uh, we love them don't we? Yeah. We love yeah. Using it. So look at that now. So now it's really 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 coming through in that uh, that two hundred. Obviously, we don't need to do that much, but um, and then turn that down a little bit. We want to try and keep everything, you know, so it's not not going too high up at the top. Okay, so now we'll move on to the higher then. Now this high up there is um, 
if I remember rightly, we did that using the live hi-hat from Addicted Drummer, I think, if I remember rightly. Uh, just just a, a simple 4-4 live hit that, um, you know, just really gives it that kind of... We, we like our drums to be very organic, like, like um, uh, you know, so it's got like that live sounding edge that's almost a bit... Because we've come from a, a break kind of background, we like hearing jungle breaks and stuff, but we also like live sounding to give it that kind of, real, real, you know, bouncy kind of feel to it. Turn the analogs on so we can see that. Yep. If you, and yeah, if you've got the analyzer on, you can see basically where that hi hat is coming through on the frequency. We're going to just take out that there. We don't really, we don't really want that. We'll kind of EQ that out there. And that sits about a little bit lower down. Yeah, that's fine. The beauty. Of the beauty of that is, again, it's not it's not conflicting. In an ideal world, what we want is like a kick, a snare, a hi hats, all to be kind of you know have their own space within the mix. And uh, and if you and if you think of it like that, as you know, you want your snare drum around about sort of 100 to 200, your kick drum up to 100 uh, with not too much bass, so you can fit the sub in. It all makes sense. It's almost like a little jigsaw. Anyway. Mm, mm, mm. So the next one, and we like to put a drum bus on those, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we're going to put, uh, put them all through a drum bus. Um, that's the one. Okay. We rename that drum bus. Yeah, so basically, what we like to do is um, send uh, the drums, the percussion, to a drum bus. And the reason for that is because um, we want the percussion all glued together. And we've been using brakes for many years, and we still use brakes now. If we send all the percussion to um, a drum bus, we've got control over that whole bus, and it kind of kind of glues it all together. So um, uh, even though obviously we're using various different elements, you've still got the the hard kick and the snare, the punch kick and the snare, but you've got elements glued together through the um, uh, um, uh, uh, through the uh, side topic glue, um, and it still feels like it's a bit breaky fired. Yeah, we just yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it. the, the 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 glue obviously mate, it's it's great because it's called the glue because it actually does sound it actually makes sound that it does glue glue things together and it seems to because it's so transparent and stuff like that we really find that Cytomic is one of our favourite bus um, bus compressors it just really does make everything sort of sit together nicely it dips and and, uh, and goes together really well uh, and we find that once once we've added all the, the elements um, that, that actually you'll find that even you know by having a break some hi-hats and all that kind of stuff it really turns it back into mm. almost a break almost mm. which is really really what we want to do we don't want it to sound like it's all too individual we want it all to you know gel together nicely mm. um which is kind of like and we found that like i said the, the uh, cytomic one seems to be one of the better ones at doing this that's so transparent and you can't actually really tell that it's on mm. uh, even though it's, it's quite a low ratio as well so that's cool right Next, next we're going to add uh, the break, the lovely hot pants break. There we go. Fantastic. Right. So what we're going to do, pretty much the same thing. Uh, we're going to first of all cut out the uh, the bottom end to make sure there's no uh, conflicting um, in the low end area. Okay. And then you just drag that low cut one I've made there. Yeah. Oh, you want to use that one? Well, you can do. It's, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Just again, a simple, um, simple way to save time. We want to keep, we want to keep that little shaker in there. Yeah, there we go. So somewhere around there, and just make sure there's nothing down this end again. Yep. Turn do down do a little the, bit. You want to do the bus bit? Yeah, yeah. We can go on. Do the next bit. Okay. So what we're going to do, just again, send that to the drum bus. And uh, another little trick that we found is using the uh, the volume shaper by the cable guys, which is uh, it's, it's something we picked up quite quickly, quite recently in fact. Um, and that actually can you know takes the bar and we can actually dock little sections of that break to, to really enhance the fact you know so it sounds more like a break as it would do you know, you know to get that kind of shuffle um, to that shuffle going and stuff like that. 
Um, it's, a, it's a really great little plug-in and obviously you can see the wave. In fact, we've, so much so, we've added one to the, the master bus as well for when we're doing the mix down later on. So uh, yeah, that's that one, okay. And then again, that's all going through uh, to the drum bus, which actually the glue is, is not only is it great for gluing things, it also adds a, a really subtle sort of brick wall limiter to the, uh, to the to the drum bus too, which is good if you, if you accidentally go over and it can just reduce your peaks a little bit. We're nearly there now. Um, just a couple of things to add. I'm gonna go with the aim on one. Yeah, basically we'll, because we've been doing it a fair while, I don't think we've ever not used an Eamon in our tracks. It's almost uh, standard to, to do that. So what we've done, we've processed the while back, and this is basically just a simply gated Eamon. So we get the, the, the sort of, the, the really fantastic sort of um, ride kind of, it's, it's such a fantastic noise that we just, it ha again, really makes your, your, your brake sound live and stuff like that. Again, by dipping the kick and the snare of the actual Eamon brake and bringing that forward. So um, basically doing the same again, just cutting out that bottom end. Again, so I'll show the, the DUI. There's someone around there. Between between two and five hundred, I think is cool. And then send that again to the to the, the drum bus. That's fine. That's fine. That's yeah. right, fine. Send that to the drum bus. We go now to the drum bus again. And turn it down. Again, you can hear it's really kind of. It's, it's only subtle, but it's also just giving it giving more fluidity to the to the to the brake and stuff like that. And then nearly done now. We've got one more brake that we want to add, which is a um, a live brake. Again, when you so add, so add, know that. add that to that. the to the gated Amen, it's a really it's a really great little. Again, top, take the top end off, bottom end, sorry. And it, that's it now, because that will basically just close your kick and snare. Turn down a bit. Now, if we look at our blue cap frequency analyzer again, you find that so you top end all down here, and fingers crossed like it is, everything is kind of down there. So you, obviously there's a clear space here for our kick and snare to come through. And that's kind of pretty much where we are. Right, there's only one more thing to do here, and that is to add, be, uh, be aware of, uh, the mid and the side, because obviously drums are, are so much more powerful if they, they hit straight down the middle. So we want to make sure that we've taken out any um, you know any anything that's coming out the side. So we just want to make, have, use this BX control by Brainworks, and we'll just make sure that there's if you, if you solo that section there, you can hear that all that break. I thought that one's not a on there yet. You can hear what's coming out of the side. Now, mid and side is something we, at the time we, in, when we made clothes, we weren't really really up on. Yeah. But we, we something we've been trying to um, to take into consideration a lot more nowadays. And uh, and therefore, what we do is just solo that, and then you can actually re take that up there and actually EQ that bit out. But we we only only really that bothered past sort of the 200, 300 mark, so it doesn't conflict. But that's but now, that hopefully should be still still a, a little bit wide, but generally, as you see here using the uh, Personas' phase meter, you can see it's generally going down the middle, just a little bit on either side. Now you could mono it completely, but we like to keep it on just a little bit, just because, you know, again, to give, it's more exciting for the ears. Yeah. Fine. So that is, that is our, our little drum section. So uh, just play that so you can hear it again. You want to press play? Mm. Now what, what Simon's using here is the beat control, which is actually it's a really handy little piece of kit which probably use uh, will explain more later, but uh, it's just so we can 
a few benefits of what we can do with it is that uh, say for example we're recording vocals or you know or even want to hear the mix back from a further but you know say like if one person's at the keyboard we can actually press record or um, or we can even you know tweak massive on here as well, mm. which it helps when there's you know two or three of us in the studio at the same time. Although it's it's quite compact, um, you know we need to try and you know make the most of what we've got. And this this little plug in here is actually uh, quite it's handy, just really it? handy. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you can you can have any 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 instrument or whatever. It comes up in this separate window, but we'll go into that a little bit more later on. But uh, yeah, so it also does transport and things like that. Pretty handy. Right. Okay. Next one, we're going to go for, we're just going to import, let's turn the volume down on the massive one. Yeah. The, uh, what we're going to do now is quickly just, uh, oh, besides just drag these two little edits in, we're going to then go through um, the actual uh, the stem noises that, uh, that that's used in close. In close we have uh, quite a quite a few noises. Quite a few different uh, elements. There we go. We're in. So, when uh, when when we started making it, we, uh, the wall of sound as well, we particularly wanted to get um, kind of like organic, natural sounding noises in. And, and the whole album is it's it's kind of a theme that we've we've gone through all the way using kind of like pianos, guitars, strings, and uh, vocals and stuff like that. Um, so. Uh, Close was pretty much one of the first ones um, we did using that. Uh, we used a few tools um, and uh, VSDI instruments. This one, the first one, the guitar, was using a uh, plugin called Real Guitar 2, which uh, it, we find has got a really sort of uh, natural sounding, um, you know, guitar, sort of acoustic guitar noise to it, as you'll hear. Even got the release of you know when you when you actually strum the guitar and the release of your fingers and the, the, the strings and stuff. We also at the same time did um, the same chords, but utilising a, a strumming, uh, you know the, the same sort of. Whereas they were single notes, this was a strumming kind of thing, and then we added those together to get. Got a real dynamics of, of having uh, the, the acoustic guitar in there. Uh, we also had a piano, uh, which is again through uh, contact, a contact instrument, native instruments, which we use. We use a lot of uh, the native instrument stuff, um, mm. uh, off, certainly off Complete Eight and Complete Nine. Um, this one um, was one that came bundled with that, I think. And uh, yeah, again, like a sort of an arpeggiated piano. <laughs> reverb to it and it's, sort of, it's, it's almost quite kind of like you've hit it quite hard really but it's, it's got a great sound to it that we thought went really well again we then added um, the initial strings uh, again using session strings which comes with complete eight uh, complete nine um, and we've had that for a while and, and that just put the final touches to the uh, to the intro So when you add the piano as well, it really adds sort of a whole movement to the intro and stuff, and you can hear that it's a, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't sound like we obviously no synthesis involved as such at, at that point. And the great thing about close was it went from being so organic, and then then it just cuts on itself, and then then in we go for the big drop. So um, okay, just just chatting about that briefly. Um, there is also to keep it keep things in key. We find it helps if we have like um, something uh, like this was actually made in F. Um, there's something that that goes throughout the back that sits in the background nicely, but also keeps us in key when we're actually playing the chords. 
mm. and, uh, and 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 everything else. It's, just, it's, it's you know it's only a simple note, but it actually works really well. We also find it actually brings everything together and, and glues everything together as well, just by having the, that noise that noise there. It can only only be quite quiet, but if you hear what. We, In. Right, so we then did the same, pretty much the same, and added all those to uh, to a bus. We call that music bus. Again, we only do that through just ease, really, so we can sort of you know mute and solo it. But also, we find again by adding a simple um, you know the, the cytomic glue again. It also just again brings it brings it together. Again, it's, it's it's only little, but the fact it's transparent, it just sort of brings it to, brings it together and turns it into a piece. It cuts out any any wild peaks or troughs and whatnot. So that's really cool, nice and simple. Right. Okay, just just to put the edit in quickly there. So now that should be. Like what we did here was obviously this is again has been pre-processed to get to the end of the bar. What, what with close, what we were trying to get all the way through was the build up to the end of the uh, 16 bar. Um, you know, so it really, really ends up really high. And the, the, the way that we did that was by just by adding those two breaks at the end, we found it sort of just kind of really simulates a you know, like a, a crescendo at the end of the bars, which will. When we do the bass, you'll you'll understand a little bit more, but uh, and that was just using the think break and uh, a classic aim and break.